Bucknutters, welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, August 26, 2019. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Steve Hellwagon. Game week has arrived, Bucknutters. The Buckeyes kick off their season in just five days against visiting Florida Atlantic. Ohio State is favored by 27.5 points. Steve, it's obviously always very exciting when a new season of Buckeye football is upon us. This year might have even more buzz than usual with it being Ryan Day's first season as head coach, first season as full-time head coach, I should say. Justin Fields taking over at quarterback, the revamped defense with four new coaches on the defensive side of the ball. The excitement is palpable, my friend. No question about it, Dave. Ohio State four-touchdown favorite uh, as they take on Florida Atlantic. Uh, you know, Lane Kiffin is the head coach down there. And and the idea is, obviously, that uh, they're going to recruit South Florida pretty heavily, guys that don't go to Central Florida, Florida, Florida State, Miami. They're going to have a good chance to get some of those second-level guys who are still – great athletes so i think that you look at it and just have to assume that they're going to put some pressure on ohio state's defense in terms of being able to make some plays here and there and yet i think that uh most people believe ohio state's going to have uh, little issue with florida atlantic last year they went to oklahoma excuse me oklahoma uh coming off an 11 and 3 season in 2017 uh, they were a three-touchdown underdog in that game, as I have my handy-dandy Phil uh, Steele right here, and they lost that game 63-14 to uh, against number seven Oklahoma. They also played uh, UCF, Central Florida, in Orlando, and uh, lost that game 56-36. to So they put up 36 points against UCF, who uh, a lot of people, I mean, that was the best team outside the Power Five and has been for a couple of years now, so... At any rate, uh, you know, I think that you're going to see uh, them, as I say, put some stress on Ohio State's defense, but I just think the depth, the size, the athleticism of Ohio State's going to be too much. Yeah, I, I just want to get into your expectations for the season as a whole for the Buckeyes. Um, you know, it's just so much going on with Ryan Day, as I was saying, like his, his first year, really, you know, as full time head coach at least, and. Um, you know, Justin Fields taking over quarterback. We'll get into all that. But, uh, you know, if you had to predict, you know, do you think they're going to go to the playoff? Do you think they're going to be Big Ten champions? Just uh, how do you see this season as a whole going for Ohio State, Steve? Yeah, I put them at 11-1 and regular season. And, uh, you know, the last two years they've lost a game when they've gone on the road to play a West team in a crossover game, Iowa in 2017 and Purdue in 2018. And, the same thing could happen this year with Nebraska if if we believe all the hype that Nebraska is going to surge back up and, and be a quality uh, team. They've got a great schedule. Uh, they play Iowa, Northwestern, and Wisconsin all at home, and those are the other top schools in the West Division with themselves, plus Ohio State. They don't have to play Michigan in a crossover, so Nebraska is poised – you know, if they just win their home games, win the games they're supposed to win, they could win 10 or 11 games this year and, and win the West uh, Division. And I think that's the team with Adrian Martinez. I know Urban Meyer and the Fox Show was talking about uh, Nebraska as a as a team that's going to surge back up. So I think that uh, that's a, a a possible loss. Just in general, though, I think Ryan Day is ready for this. I think the three games that he coached last year when Urban Meyer was uh, suspended, I think that uh, that prepared him uh, properly for what he's going to face as a true first-time full-time head coach. So I think that that was good experience for him. What we don't know is how Justin Fields is going to react, you know, when the lights come on and, and he's the guy, I mean, he has to be the guy that leads the team, leads the offense and he's never been in this position yet at the college level, will make his first career start uh, this Saturday against Florida Atlantic. And I think you're going to have to take some of the the bad with the good. There's going to be some growing pains uh, when plays don't get made just because he's never seen some of the things that he's going to see when they get into to live game action. It's one thing to participate and to flourish in a in a controlled scrimmage where you're told okay it's third and ten and the defense is in a four three look and they're not going to show you something 
exotic or whatever. Well, you get into a football game and all of a sudden, you know, the guy who's been lined up at safety is lined up at the line of scrimmage and he's coming on a blitz. And, you know, just as an example, how are you going to react to this situation? And so, you know, I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be some growing pains with fields, maybe some turnovers. As we heard, the Ohio State defense was getting turnovers during practice early on, which was a departure from last year. They had 11 interceptions the entire season in a 14-game season, just didn't get uh, those kind of interceptions that they needed. And uh, perhaps, uh, you know, the, on defense they'll have some takeaways. But the flip side of that is that fields – you know, where Haskins was very stingy throwing the ball to the opponents, that may happen, you know, a little bit more often with Fields. Speaking of Fields, how many quarterback runs, called quarterback runs, do you think we're going to see? Not necessarily when he scrambles, but, uh, and I'm talking about in big games. I think they're going to try and, obviously, in, in games that they think they can just, you know, win just by doing whatever they want to do. They're not going to risk calling too many QB runs. But if you're in a tight game, um, or you think it's going to be a tough game? Just what do you expect in those, you know, four or five big games during the regular season? How many quarterback runs do you think we're going to see from Fields? I think that's a great question. I think they're going to use the J.T. Barrett model, which is if it's not needed, don't do it. Don't put him in harm's way unless it's a scramble situation where he has no choice but to either eat the football or to try and take off. So I think that uh, you're going to see in a game like Florida Atlantic, I think the over-under on his carries ought to be something like uh, six or seven at the most. And then as you get into you know a conference game, let's say Indiana, maybe 10. A tough conference game could be more than 10. So I think he is the hidden weapon with his running ability that, that no one's talked about, and uh, they know it's there, and they can rely on it if they need to. I think him running the football also puts some balance back in the running game because teams were able last year, I was watching the replay of the Ohio State-Michigan game on Big Ten Network just last night, and it was obvious that Haskins wasn't going to run the football, and so they'd give it off to Dobbins, and he would be lucky to get a yard or two before he was hit because everybody would key on the running back, whether it was Dobbins or Weber. And unless they uh, were able to block it perfectly, it was kind of a, a rough situation, I think, for the running back in that offense last year because by the uh, – 10th, 11th, 12th week, it was obvious probably by the third week that he wasn't going to keep the ball and run it just, you know, maybe once a quarter. And, uh, you know, that's not enough. So I don't know. I think that um, it, it should provide some better balance. I think Dobbins will easily go for a, a thousand yards for the third year in a row, provided he's healthy and able to answer the bell just because. Uh, the threat of Fields keeping it uh, is going to keep the defense on their toes a little bit. So I'm excited to see how this offense comes together. Uh, Will they integrate, uh, you know, the receivers? How's that going to go? From what I understand from the scrimmage over the weekend, Austin Mack was back in the fold, and that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, as this team gets healthy and gets all of its pieces in there together, this offense could, again, be something to watch. You mentioned the defense earlier. They finished 72nd in the country last year in total defense, Steve. Um, we know they're going to be better. I think they're going to be a lot better. I mean, just, you know, if you had to put a number on it, we just look at total defense, which I love that stat. I mean, points can be, you know, it can be misleading because – you know, you don't know if it's a special team score or, you know, the offense gave up a pick six or whatever it might be. But, you know, total yards usually in the end, it kind of equals out. Um, and you can kind of tell who the best defenses are from that stat. So where do you think they're going to go from 72nd in the country in total D this or last year to what do you think they're go, going to go to this year? I think if they can get back in the top 40, I think that's a, a good goal. Maybe you leave a little higher to be elite. Um, I'm looking again at my handy-dandy Phil Steele. And uh, the last five years, uh, in 2014, they, they, when they won the national championship, they gave up on average 342 yards per game. And then the next three years were 311, 297, and 301. So they were right around 300 yards in all three of those seasons when they had great defenses, 15, 16, and 17. I mean, just out of this world fabulous. And they were under 20 points a game. 
in uh, each of those seasons, uh, even down as low as 15.1 in 2015, uh, when you had the uh, the Joey Bosa swan song and a lot of the other guys, you know, on that defense like Lee and and uh, Perry and you know so many of those other guys. Last year, Dave, it jumped all the way up to 403 yards and 25 points per game, 25.5 to be uh, uh, accurate. So they got some work to do uh, to get, I mean, that was a 100 yards difference from the year before and a full touchdown. So, and still went 13-1 and one just because the offense was so prolific. Well, you may not have that uh, strong of an offense this year, but your defense will also be uh, tons better. So if they can get that back under, let's say, 340, you know, in that range, you know, maybe maybe even lower, and get back in the top 30, 40 nationally, I would consider that a huge step. I'm interested to see what, uh, you know, I want to watch the first half of the Florida Atlantic game uh, and, and see what the personnel groupings look like, you know, when it's first and 10, when it's second and seven, when it's third and six, when it's third and one, what do those position groups look like? And um, how much do guys – like Sean Wade, who I think is one of their best 11 defensive players, but probably their number three cornerback. How much do uh, guys like him play? I mean, to be honest with you, there's a lot of people out there that put him ahead of Arnett, perhaps, but at any rate, Arnett's going to play. So, um, you know, I don't know. It, it's going to be fun. Uh, Brendan White, how often does he line up at safety? How often does he line up at linebacker? Um, you know, if you want to win, you got to have a guy like that on the field. So, to me, um, I'm interested to see uh, what that'll look like, and uh, and so on. So, Jonathan Cooper, what do we know about his situation? We hope to find out tomorrow uh, from Coach. Uh, I don't talk about uh, injuries day. Uh, what uh, what his situation is? Is he going to miss the first game, or will he be back? So, all that kind of uh, powers into. Uh, what uh, what the defense is going to look like. Great insights from Steve Hellwagon. Thank you very much, Steve, and thank you to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. One quick programming note, uh, this year's Ryan Day press conference, the head coach press conference, will be on Tuesday afternoons, really late morning, 11.45 a.m. each Tuesday. Urban Meyer, during his seven-year era at Ohio State, would have his official weekly press conference on Mondays. So we're kind of going back to the Jim Trestle era where Trestle would always have his on Tuesdays. So look for Ryan Day's press conference each Tuesday, 11.45 a.m. And after that, we're going to get two assistant coaches per week. We're going to get some players as well. So Tuesday's going to be a big day each week for coverage. So that'll all be happening on Bucknuts tomorrow. Thanks again to Steve Hellwagon, and thanks to all the listeners. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Fire, 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 fire,